They tried to kill us. They didn't kill us. Let's eat. Let's not only eat, let's have a big celebration. Let's have a big party. This is David Tal. This is the Balagan Connection. And today we're going to be talking about the celebration of Purim and, and make a couple of connections. Connection number one, all Jewish holidays have the same idea behind them. In uh, Hanukkah, it's the Greeks who tried to kill us, and we have a celebration. In Passover, it's the Egyptians who tried to kill us, and we have a celebration. This time, it's the Persians, and we have a big, big celebration, a big Balagan party. But the other word for Persian is Iranian, and we'll connect Persia, Iran. But I think the most important connection that we're going to do today, make today, is how God uses all kinds of different mechanisms be it political, be it even the beauty of a, of a beautiful woman, in order to achieve his goals, even if he's not even mentioned in, in the whole story. And that's going to be the Balagan connection today, so, so stay with us. And we're going to go a little bit into Purim, which is a big celebration. And, and what Jews do for the celebration of Purim is they sit down in the evening and they read the 10 chapters of the Book of Esther. Uh, I do suggest strongly that you go back to the Book of Esther and read the Book of Esther in this period because it'll connect you to what's going on. Uh, we read it with a lot of, of fun and we read it with a lot of, of uh, how do you say, balagan. Uh, every time the good guys are mentioned, we whistle and we, we celebrate. Every time the bad guys mention, we make noise and, and we say, you know, bad things about them. And, and it's a big kind of celebration to tell the story of, of God saving his people, in this case, in the story of Esther that takes place in Persia. Uh, let's go back in a little bit. I want to run out and, and kind of make a couple of connections to the main stories and the main people in the story. Uh, the first person that we're going to talk about is what we call King Ahasuerus, the, the uh, emperor of the Persian Empire. You know him as Xerxes. And anybody who's seen the movie 300 knows that th this guy, Xerxes, Okay, this scary kind of Pierce guy, okay, that goes into the movie 300. Um, he's the one who has actually married to Queen Esther in, in this whole story. Um, weird guy, drunk, wacko, um, and, and again, very probably not a very moral person. And, and it's fascinating that he becomes part of this story. Then we have the bad guy. The bad guy in, in, in Hebrew is called Haman, okay? You would call him Haman, and he is actually spelled H-A-M-A-N. And if I take this N, turn it around, and flip it, it turns into an S. And I can't help but make the connection that the bad guy in the book of Esther, Haman, is also the bad guy today on the ground, and that is an organization called Hamas. Actually, there's no really relevant connection, but I just like, you know, the, the graphic part of that. But anyway, Haman decides that he doesn't like the Jewish people. They're different, they have different ideas, and he decides to get against them, and he puts together a plot which basically says that he, because the Jews do not revere him and do not respect him the way he wants to, he's not only going to kill Mordechai, who is the main player in this story, but he's going to kill all of the Jews. And, and Haman kind of puts together this multinational plot. He, he manages to convince the king uh, to do this, and uh, it all centers around the good guy in the story. is a guy named Mordechai, Mordechai who is a Jew, who is a player in, in the political arena, and uh, he saves King Xerxes' life, Ahasuerus' life, okay, but doesn't receive any um, credit for it, uh, but is still a loyal uh, person in the kingdom, but is not accepted like that, and Haman decides to, tr to try to kill him, and he becomes the main center for the plot. The only thing that, mo the, that uh, God has put in place, though, is... Uh, Mordechai has a niece, we understand, uh, I guess, whose parents have died, and he takes, him under his, takes her under his wing. And when uh, the crazy king has a, a beauty pageant and he wants a new queen, uh, Esther, who is the, the good girl in, in all of this, is, becomes a new queen because of her amazing beauty and, and actually is put in a place 
to play a role in, in this story. Esther is the ultimate girl boss. I mean, this whole story is about, uh, how do you say, uh, feminism and, and women taking uh, control over the, the situation. And she uses everything. She uses uh, her beauty. She uses her place in the political system. And more than anything, she uses her faith in God. And when she realizes that her people are on the line and again, we're going to go back and connect all of this, okay, uh, she actually puts her own life on the line. She approaches the king, which is, could have been a death sentence, and, and through God's provision, uh, the king holds out his scepter and, and accepts her and, and allows her to convince him to thwart the plot to kill all of the Jews in the kingdom. So that's the basics of the story. But I can't help make Balagan connections to all of this. First thing is Persia, Iran, same kingdom, decide that they want to wipe the Jews off the planet. And, and just like Haman is actually plotting to do this, Persia is doing this again today, trying to wipe the Jews off the planet. But just like last time, Okay, when, when, when the plot was thwarted at the last moment, I believe that this time God is using different elements. And, and, and what I want to stress in, in a very interesting connection to the story is that when you read the book of Esther, God is not mentioned. There's not these supernatural events that, that God uses to save his people. He doesn't part the sea. He doesn't bring down lightning. But he uses the existing mechanism, the political system, the, the harem of, of the emperor, uh, the beauty of, of, of Esther. And he uses all of these things in a very unique manner, things and, and mechanisms that were already in place in order to save his people. I think it's fascinating. I mean, we've got stories about, you know, all the supernatural events. But what I need to say is God sometimes uses the machinery in place. And, and what I feel very good about in my case is that not all of the players in this story were, were very moral people. I mean, not all of them were very good people. Uh, but God uses the abilities and the qualities of each and every one of these players here in order to, to thwart this, this terrible ordeal or this terrible plan to destroy the Jewish people and, and to fulfill his purpose. And as one of those people who not always is the best and not always is, is right, I, I'm stressing the fact that, that God can even use people like me in the existing system in order to achieve his, his need. And, and the special verse that, that connected my heart to this story, besides the fact that every time I say, hey man, I'm supposed to do this, is that um, if you got a Bible, open up, and we're gonna go into the book of Esther, and, and again, the, the part where, where it all turns around and becomes, I think, very special. And this is the book of Esther, chapter 4, and I'm going to read verses 13 and 14, and it says this. Uh, Esther is in the palace. Mordechai is outside. She asks Mordechai, what are we going to do? And here's what Mordechai answers through a messenger. Do not think in your heart that you will escape the king's palace and any more than all of the other Jews. Basically, Mordecai is saying, you're in this with all of us. You might be in the palace. You might be the queen. You might be in America. You might be in Hollywood. You might be in the White House. Don't think you're going to escape this because you're a Jew just like all of the rest of us. For if you remain completely silent at, at this time, relief and deliverance will arise for the Jews from another place. But you and your father's house will be destroyed. What Mordechai is saying is, if you don't step up to the plate here, somebody else will. But you will pay the price. But here's the message that I think is deep on my heart that I think is, is important. Yet who knows whether you have not come to the kingdom for such a time as this. What Mordechai is telling Esther, God's made his plans. God's got his way to deliver his people. 
but you've been placed in your place, in this place of power, in this place of, of, of ability to, to, to make a difference, you've put in, been put in this place for such a time as this. And for all of us, and for me especially, I'm saying, I guess I'm here for such a time as this. I guess you are where you are for such a time as this. All you need to do is say, God, use me. Take me. Take my abilities. Take my qualities. Not all of them are good. Use whatever you need in order to achieve your plan. And I think more than anything, that's the story of the book of Esther. That's the story that, that we wanted to connect here tonight. So, happy Purim. Haman is bad. Mordechai is good. The Jews are saved at the last moment. Let's have a party. Let's have a celebration. And, and this is the Balagan Connection. Uh, two things about uh, the Balagan Connection that I want to connect. Uh, some good news if, if we're all celebrating. We finally kind of made a decision. We will go, be going back to Israel in about a month. Uh, I want to do some filming, so if any of you are interested in something as specific that you want to visit or to film, please let me know in the comments be below. Uh, pray for us. Pray that tourism is going to kind of kick up sometime soon. Again, uh, we're looking for a way to continue to support this work. So if you are interested in what the Balagan Connection is doing, subscribe, like, share. And uh, there's a link below to Gijon Springs, which is the organization that actually will help us fund some of the work that we're doing here. Thank you for all your support. Thank you for, for being here. Hope to see you again soon. This is David Tal. This is the Balagan Connection. Have a wonderful, wonderful pouring.